Well, I just watched your movie, American huh. Sausage Standoff, or Gutterby, as it was once known or is known in other territories. I don't know how that stuff works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was delightful. It was just... You are such a magnificent uh, presence on screen. You're like this. It reminds me in some ways of my mom, who is also an immigrant, uh, as your character is, and was ready to get the American dream and was ready to throw a punch if she, if someone was going to try and take it from her. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about, like, you know, the inspiration aside from the script, of course, of, mm. uh, you know, developing this guy. Right. Well, so oh, Ulrich put the script together from all this verbatim stuff, interviews, documentaries, news reports, uh, and every, every line in the script that was spoken was a quote from an actual person in real life. How, you know, that, came together as a screenplay was was much more of a kind of like wrangling a, a tiger, you know, it, it, you know, to try to make all of that information into a story um, and clear specific characters was uh, a challenge. And I, I, I knew, you know, in a lot, in a lot of ways, the voices were kind of similar, you know, the kind of stuff that he'd been researching. So a lot of it is, you know, focused on xenophobia and um and also patriotism and and uh people's people's feelings about that so the voices was actually quite similar to kind of make the characters more specific uh was it took a little bit of thought and work so you know i started to really see edward as someone who uh was at the end of their rope, um, this, they're facing they're facing either uh, death by suicide or death by drinking, you know, suicide by alcoholism, or you know, or actually just you know something more premeditated. But this is a last ditch attempt. He's a depressed man who's making a last ditch attempt to fulfill some sort of purpose that he sees that he's supposed to have you know related to his, his dead parents and uh and so he's he's washed up in this town it's his last attempt to actually kind of realize himself uh and it's only through, by an accident that he meets this uh you know released felon who believes in him i don't know why he believes in him you know he's you know i think this guy has ulterior motives as well he wants to kind of take advantage of the situation but but is his his uh, good heart kind of uh wins out you know and you know i'm, I'm talking about anthony's character mike and kind of gets behind this dream you know they're both two guys like mike's in search of a dream to kind of put himself into as a last ditch attempt and, and Edward has this dream, but he does just, is just too big for him to realize on his own. And he would probably just like drink himself to death in that church. If, if uh, Mike hadn't broken in to try to steal the, the television, you know? Sure. And, and so that's how I see, that's how I kind of focused in on who this guy was. And then I kind of built it from there and, and then find ways that I could have fun with it really. Like, because for me, it's important that a character has a specific mission and a specific uh, soul. But I, I want to have, I want to find the ways I can have fun with that as well. So I, I sort of maybe, I maybe um, teased in some Werner Herzog uh, memories from working with him and, 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 uh, and enjoy, you know, enjoyed some of that austere kind of um, unbreakable uh, metal that that Edward has. You know, even you know, it's so there's something once pathetic about him, but at the same time, like steely and you know, incredible 
right. incredible metal that he has, you know? Once like, he I, has that purpose, he will stand against anything that tries to knock him down. Yeah. 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 Once he's got that wind under his sails that Mike gives him, he's, he's like, he's moving forward and he's, he can, he can believe in himself because Mike believes in him. And, you know, the power of belief is such a, uh, is such a potent thing that drives, that drives our society. It also drives the film business, you know, the, the, the power of belief, you know, a, a project, if people don't believe in a project, then it's not happening. If you don't, if a, com- if a project doesn't have confidence in it, then it's not happening. And this, this project, it, it was like touch and go before it got, it actually went into production. And I only came on board because of the belief that uh, Ulrich had and the cinematographer Anthony Dodmanto had in it, uh, in this mad project in the middle of America. We were 50 miles from the nearest gas station, you know, in a, in a tiny village that was surrounded by ghost towns and, and uh, in the middle of winter tried to make this, uh, mad film that kind of on paper I couldn't really make sense of, <laughs> but through I could, through their belief, I I I kind of gave myself to it, you know, sure. because because I, I know Anthony really well and uh, his instinct for for projects and his his instinct is impeccable and. Um, and so I'm talking about Anthony John Mantle, the cinematographer. I, don't, I didn't know Anthony Starr before, but uh, the cinematographer I know really well. I worked with him for for many years, and, and uh, he he's always he's always gravitating towards some, the unknown, and that's that takes a lot of courage and uh, and belief. So. Uh, I, that's that's what that's what made me bite the bullet and get on board with it. Was, well, was their pack with their passion you know? sure it works it shows on screen um mm-hmm. you know uh, i i went i didn't know anything about it when they send me you know they'll offer me the interviews and send me the the screeners mm. i don't look up the trailer or look up anything else because i'm like well i'm gonna watch it anyway so mm-hmm. why spoil anything and then afterwards i look it up and it was just such a a delight i had no idea what I was going to get. And I hope a lot of people just like, take the chance, just take a chance, watch a movie. It's got you in, in it. <laughs> oh, I'm delighted that you enjoyed it. Well, yeah. it, reminds, it reminds me of like a Napoleon dynamite uh, in its sort of uh, unusual, uh, un- unique kind of, uh, it doesn't follow the rules of storytelling and it doesn't follow uh, the rules, but it has this like, huge heart and unexpected humor you know like the humor in this like, whoa <laughs> you know really <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah um okay so so you mentioned anthony you know he and, and he's you know i assume that you know him because he's he's a danny boyle guy and you're a danny boyle guy yeah well i i worked with him harmony kareen like in 1999 or something yeah like Way way back then, uh, we we uh, made a movie together called Julian Donkey Boy, and uh, we worked very closely on that. Um, and yeah, and so I, I I've we've been very good friends since then, um, and we worked together. I think I think on some other stuff as well, but but especially on T two, uh, the the Danny Boyle film and. and uh, yeah, so this was, I don't know which one we did first, no, we did T2 first, and then we, we did, because this, this film has been, like, it got, it got uh, arrested mm. because of the pandemic, you know, we were, it had a whole bunch of festivals lined up, and then, and just as the pandemic hit, it just kind of crushed the momentum, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. I've heard, a, you know, a, a few stories at this point of movies that were like locked and loaded and ready to go. And then they just went into limbo. Yeah. So yeah. I, I really do hope that, you know, I can help get the, you know, the word out, get some recognition, because I think it's a really uh, special movie. Awesome. Um, Thank you. If I've got uh, some time, I'd like to ask you about, uh, I'd like to go back in time. 
Mm. Let's go back to, to, I guess, Train Spotting would be the movie that people said made you a star, but you'd been around for a while before then, of course. Um, well, I'd, I'd been hustling around. Yeah, I've been doing, I've been like, yeah, working as an actor and for, well, yeah, I mean, since I was like 14 years old. So I've probably been working about 10 years in obscurity, you know, before Train Spotting, but you know, quite, quite happily in obscurity and very happy to have any kind of job at all, you know? Well, that's so, what I wanted to ask you is like, you know, during that interim from when you start working, you said happily in obscurity, but was there a pressure either from yourself or just from outside people being, you know, get a real job, go, you know, 10 bar. Not that you didn't do that, of course. Um, but, you know, tell me about like just the self belief that it takes to, to hustle in this industry. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't done any other kind of work. And I, you know, part of that is unfortunate to have grown up in a time where it was feasible for an actor to get welfare, uh, you know, from for for spells of time, you know, and assistance with your rent to get paid and that sort of thing. So I was able to kind of do a dance, you know, and somehow stay afloat through through the rough times, Um but yeah, I I uh, I think it takes <clears throat> two things like recklessness because it's 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 reckless to um, decide that you're going to make your living doing something that uh, de- completely depends on somebody wanting you amongst you know hundreds of thousands of other actors, other, other uh, candidates um, for a very specific job. And it also takes courage, I think. So I've got, I think I've got a balance of this and I still do it probably it's less reckless now, but I've got that reckless streak and, and some degree of courage um, that, I've, that has carried me through. You know, and there's been times where I've, you know, lost... I've lost faith in like my ability to kind of continue as an actor or, you know, over, over time that I've, you know, I have had the odd crisis of like, I can't do this anymore. But, uh, the, the, that, that, I think courage and recklessness are some kind of, um, combination that allow me to be an actor, you know, that, and also in my work as well, like, uh, I don't want to be in the safe place on a job. I want to be kind of taking it to the dangerous place, even on a safe job. You know, I, I want to be kind of in the danger zone where I can absolutely fail. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to be in a safe place. I just there's nothing I can hold on to there. You know, I need to. I need to have that ledge. ledge. <laughs> Well, I imagine that you're over at this point, the idea of playing that kind of role that anyone could play. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. I mean, I, I, although I, at the same time, I do have faith in the idea that uh, any opportunity to, uh, to work and to play is, is something that you can do something with even if it's reading the phone book you know i i believe i can do something with that that will make it uh worth doing you know i, I can find purpose in reading the phone book um no directory i don't know what you call it here but, and you don't even have phone directories anymore i don't know i shouldn't use that term because it's like that's a thing you know, like you probably didn't grow up in an age where uh they had a phone director, which is like this big book of just names and numbers that you have to kind of leaf through to find out. Uh, I have a couple at the museum. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, but it's, it's that faith that you, you know, that anything is anything, any opportunity is worth pursuing to, to make something, you know, anything offers the opportunity to make something, uh, I, I do have that face, you know, I don't, so yeah, I, at the same time, I don't want to do a part that anyone could play, but if that is the case, then I want to look at it and say like, well, what do I want to do with this part? 
what what can I bring to the park? What is the what are the parameters here that I can really enjoy? How how can I find a way to enjoy this? Mm. And if I can't, then then that's my fault and my problem. It's not the fault of the writer or the producers or the director or whatever. That's that's with me. So that that's how I sort of philosophize uh, my mission or what I'm trying to yeah. you know, the way forward that I'm trying to find. Totally. I'm thinking like. Do you feel like you get that room to be creative on even, you know, big blockbuster movies? I mean, I'm thinking off the top of my head, you know, your Wonder Woman character could have been very stock, but instead he's like secretly a huge soulful, you know, chapter of that movie. Like, was that uh -huh. something that was already there or did you get to, to weave it in? Um, I, th I think... I mean, that's something that Patty Jenkins really was fishing for. You know, she really was encouraging myself and the other actors to bring uh, that to the parts. You know, she she wanted she didn't want them to be stuck. She wanted them to to really have some kind of integrity and to try to find that in in sort of language that, you know, on the page is more plain, you know, and the script is more plain, but she she really wanted to, the, her film to have that heart and soul, you know, not just from Wonder Woman, but uh, Gal Gadot, but from, and, and, um, and the, the uh, Chris, but the, she wanted that heart and soul, that integrity to be, you know, part of the fabric of that film, you know, to, you know, through, throughout, so, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that is a good example because uh, you know, in, in different hands, or if I, you know, if I wasn't feeling like, oh, this is, this is just a job. If I was feeling like, oh, this is just a job, then I just turn up and say the lines, and I'd be the one that. Uh, would be let down, you know. I'd be letting myself down if I if I just turned up and did that, because that's I see that as an opportunity to go into the unknown, and and that any opportunity that I have to do that is is uh, is really treasure, you know. That's that's I'm, I'm fortunate to have those opportunities, and I and, and I don't want to waste them. Well, we're fortunate that you have those opportunities because, um, you know, that's what makes you one of the greats and why it's such a, an honor and a pleasure to get to talk to you today. Thank you, Zach. Uh, it is really, you know, I can't think of another word, but just an honor to get to talk to you. Uh, and thank you so much for this movie and for all the rest of your work. Um, just whatever you do, keep on doing it because it, uh, it helps. Thanks, man. It's, it's uh, great talking to you. You too.